All right, Dave, we are starting. So today we are going to talk about full stack monitoring. But to begin, we need to talk about this idea of the tech stack because technical engineering teams like to think of their environments in terms of a stack. They build software uh, at the various layers of the stack and they align technology at the various layers of the stack. So this is how I represent the tech stack. It starts from your infrastructure, which could even be bare metal, to your networking layer, your application infrastructure, which gets confusing. It is different. This is your Kubernetes and your orchestrators, to your backend, which is your database, to your application logic, which blurs the boundaries. This is because you're going to have a lot of services that don't show up to the end user, but are a big part of your application. To the API, where you have internal and external interfaces with your services, and the front end, what the user sees. There's a lot involved in each of these layers. Now, it's not just the technology behind these stacks. It's also the people behind the stacks because these also align very often with personas and people within the engineering organization. I know we use this term full stack developer. Well, generally in practice, they're not actually full stack. They're going to be focused in a specific area of building the application. Why is this all really matter? Why, why is it so important to emphasize the stack? Well, that's because aligning your monitoring processes and tools with your stack, your tech stack, is a must. The reason for that is organizations are really good at engineering their stack, building the things that go inside of the stack. What they often don't think about as they go through that process is how do they make sure that it's visible? How do they make sure that while they are building these technologies, that it's visible? So it stands to reason that you should have a process for aligning your monitoring tools and processes with each layer of your tech stack, and then making sure that there is a thread that weaves them all together so that you have visibility in depth and breadth in your environment. What we see in organizations is that this very often does not happen. We find that enterprises and most engineering organizations, even the cloud native ones, become very good at creating visibility at one portion of the stack, maybe two. And that's usually because the team who owns that portion of the stack is the one who picks their own tools and their own processes without spending the effort to connect them to the rest of the organization. So here's two common scenarios. First one is you'll have great visibility in infrastructure, great visibility in your application infrastructure like Kubernetes, great visibility in application logic, but have zero visibility in networking, backend, API, and front end. Now, that works really well for those individual teams. But the problem comes is when those teams need to communicate. The infrastructure team is very likely using a separate tool that they have fine-tuned for infrastructure and they have siloed within their organization. So within their group, everybody understands what's going on and has amazing visibility, but they cannot correlate it with the rest of the stack. Same with the application team. Developers are great at finding their own monitoring tool, keeping it to themselves, having their own visibility, but not connecting it to the rest of the stack. Well, if you don't and something breaks in your application, then you have to hunt and peck in all of these different silos of visibility, which ultimately end up becoming different languages that people are speaking to understand exactly what's going on. Another common scenario is where you'll get the application logic in the front end, have great visibility there because the engineering team owns it. They just run with it. And then you have an operations team, which is really great at understanding the infrastructure, but they miss everything in between. What is full stack monitoring? Very simply, full stack monitoring just means that every layer of your tech stack, you align monitoring and processing tools. 
such that you can weave a thread through every single layer. Everyone's on the same page. Um, a security professional can see what's going on with the application front end and infrastructure and understand it. They don't need to be intimately involved with it, but they should understand it because it's only going to help them do a better job at fighting incidents in production. So you go all the way from infrastructure monitoring to APM to DEM and to your SIM so that at every layer you have visibility that goes throughout your entire stack. And another view of this is to look at it from a more of a technology perspective. What are the monitoring technologies I need? You need infrastructure monitoring and APM in a practice of observability, which also combines data, traces, and spans. You need incident response wrapped all around that to make sure that you have the right context. When you're in a firefight, you get to the right person at the right place at the right time with the right tools so they don't have to go hunt. And then throughout all of this, of course, you need to consider security as we've seen with the latest article regarding public and private artifact repositories. As we know with solar winds, this is a, a security is everybody's concern. So now I'm going to hand it off to Dave and he's going to dig deeper into what it means on the application level. So when we start talking about this, this is actually the Gardner viewpoint of this whole full stack environment. And it's, it's kind of useful to, to look at this because they're very simple questions. And when we're talking particularly, um, you know, with, with you people who actually are responsible for solving the, the, the job, it really comes down to what do you do? Why do I care? And how do you do it for this? And what's happened with full stack monitoring is that there are levels of questions that are showing up in every one of these. From stage one, is the system up and running? And I, I use this phrase a lot, but we used to, to walk computer rooms and look for blinking lights on servers. And literally it was so that we knew that the server was up and running. Um, and there were um, interesting high-end servers, for instance, that would not only do that, they would, their, the speed of the lights would tell us how fast the CPU was working. Or the speed of the lights would tell, show us how fast the network switch was operating. Um, and this became really kind of useful, but it answered a simple question, is it up? Didn't mean it was working for this. We then started looking at service monitoring. Is it working? And that gave us the insights, the performance monitoring comes into the standard dashboarding comes in here. How are things running inside of here? When something goes wrong, we then to the next step, which is how do we know what went wrong? Where's the cause of the problem and what caused the problem? And those three things sort of gave us a technology basis. And from there, we certainly said, that, you know, there's some really interesting things. You know, how many, how many catalog views are going on? What's the most popular product? How long is it taking for a customer? And we started getting business insights into the, the stack monitoring. Even though we do talk about this a lot as the technology stack, keep in mind that that impacts the business. And so having the information from the technology side also lets us understand the business side better. Um, in talks on red monitoring, for instance, red is a great proxy for customer happiness. Um, how long it took them, how many got completed and all those type of things. And finally, we get all the way up to where it becomes, how do we automate it? How do we optimize it? And how do we improve it? And so these are the stages that show up inside of this. When we look at this from the DevOps viewpoint though, there are two sets of crossovers here. And DevOps, no matter what, the observability technology tends to kind of focus still on the right-hand side of this. Observability is part of coding, a part of the build process, but it's not really well integrated at this point in time. Should it be? Absolutely, for here. And this is where we start talking about looking at the pipelines. What our CI CDs really look like? How much of the code is going into here? How do we actually manage to get our code instrumented to a point? And so we have these two technologies that sort of frame our entire DevOps environment. Over time, these will merge and they will become the same point problems. But as an example, 
something Chris talked a little bit about. This is not a trivial problem to solve. This is a very complex world. From your external client coming out here, at this point in time, you don't even know what that external client is. Is it somebody's laptop? Is it somebody's phone? Is it an, a, um, a remote device that's measuring water on crops, for instance, here? And it comes in through functionality. Each of these pieces takes additional time and steps for this. And each of these pieces, which are in this case individual services, have underlying infrastructure functionality as well as its own capabilities. And each of these keys could be one or multiples and can flex and appear and go away. So we're trying to solve a very complex set of problems that are inside of this. This should be fairly obvious to those of you who are familiar. This is kind of a e-commerce environment. We see these all the time going into this. And we need to understand what's going on for each of these pieces. But that leads us to this wonderful grouping of functionality, the product sets. Way back, I think around 2011, somewhere in the 2010, 2011 timeframe, when Google was trying to simply manage their own business, if one of their services, if Gmail went down or if Google Docs went down, they were dependent on 17 unconnected tools to try to figure out what the problem was. And this is an indication that what happened was nobody used the tools because trying to deal with 17 different tools is impossible. It just doesn't happen here. And so even here, we're looking at multiple sets of tooling here. The difference is, is that when we want to make sure, we want to make sure these tools are correlated across all of those. And they run the gamut. Infrastructure monitoring, which is visibility um, into the activity that's going on underlying the application. Infrastructure and application logs, what they, the things themselves thinks are going on inside of here. Business insights, what data can we get from this? And then instant intelligence. And so that how we start bringing in the automation and automated response capabilities. Surrounding or driving all this are, are customer facing apps, customers in the sense of being either external or internal functionality. And they are driven by a couple of other factors here. We have synthetics monitoring, which is not only availability, but testing. We spend a lot of time saying something's wrong. How do you know what's wrong? Do you even know it ever worked correctly in the first place? And synthetic starts giving us the capability of doing that. So we use synthetics where we know what the results should be to be able to test against to make sure that we're setting appropriate baselines. And the nice thing is that when you do synthetics, you're getting a standard answer. You know what the behaviors are. That should fit directly into your alerting structure and so that you can set alerts based on your synthetics activity so that when something is out of the ordinary or unexpected to you, it gets flagged right here. We look at real use of monitoring. How, what is happening to the person that's actually working with your system? And this can be both aggregate as well as individual. What is an individual's journey through this versus what is the user's journey through your system and how does it vary? That leads us into things like application performance monitoring, distributed tracing, and application infrastructure monitoring. Applications don't run by themselves. And applications, as we saw on the previous slide, can become increasingly complex. Driving a lot of that functionality is the two points up in the left-hand side here, endpoint monitoring. What device am I coming from and what are the factors around that device? When I was back working in, in IoT space, for instance, one of the things we used to deal with were smart cars. What happens to an endpoint if the smart car goes through a tunnel and loses connectivity? It's different than somebody sitting at a desktop if you're on a phone that can drop connections or go from cell tower to cell tower here. And because of that, we need to look at the network performance capabilities to understand where the slowdowns are in the network. For here, the example, we can see that our external client is taking 20 seconds to connect to our front end. That's actually not unusual. The first connection can take a, 
a significant chunk of time here. After that point, once they're in that front end and talking to the back end, they expect things to happen roughly 3.7 seconds. That's kind of the, the, the gold standard for what makes a user happy in the back end here. And we can see, for instance, here, one of my communications pathways is running at 18 seconds. So I know I've got a problem that's going on. And you can continue to trace down all of these different functionalities. The NPM, the network's performance monitoring, will give me insights to where that's coming from. Are my 20 seconds because of DNS lookup or that I haven't cached in enough places inside of here? My endpoint will tell me the device I'm coming from, which can give me clues and factors around what type of service I can expect. And then once into my environment, I can start looking at the infrastructure, I can look at the applications, I can understand what, what's happening and what should be happening. The advantage to this model is that each of these pieces is working off the same set of problem space and needs to have the same set of data correlated across it. And this is where we see things going across full stack monitoring. That it is not pick the right tool, but that the tools themselves all integrate and work together. Use the right tool at the right time. You don't have to use every one of these tools, but you should not have to repeat your steps just because you've switched to a new focus on your, your tooling.